What's good, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Community Voices. Man, today I'm sitting with arguably one of the most interesting men in the NBA today. Um, you'll definitely learn why I'm saying that during our convo today. Power forward for the Boston Celtics, MB, MBPA vice president, youngest, to, to make sure I point that out, the youngest to ever do it. Uh, Grant Williams, welcome to Community Voices, man. How you doing? How you feeling? Feeling great, man. I'm um, just happy to be on and thank you for having me. For sure. I appreciate you cutting out time in your busy schedule. You know what I'm saying? From grinding on the court, training, all those kind of things you got going on. I appreciate you cutting out time for this. So 100% thank you. And I have to say too, because I'm not here in the Boulder office, but just because we're in Boulder, we definitely have some diehard Celtics fans out here. Um, people on my team, Ish and Brittany, who are a diehard Celtics fans, talking about they bleed green. So I just have to make sure I sent you their love because they were super excited that we would be on the Community Voices today. So we got fans out here. I appreciate it. It was like a home game when we played in Denver this year. We ended up losing this time, but uh, it's definitely some love out there for you guys, and I appreciate you guys for sure. Tell Ish and Brittany I say hello. Most definitely, definitely will, man. Well, look, let's go ahead and get into it, man. I'm going to – uh, I want to start off with this because you've been with the Celtics since 2019, and you've had literally – Oh, I think it's really special since you've entered, you've had playoff experience from the jump. Uh, Celtics are kind of basically always known for being in the playoffs and being such a dominant elite team. And they've constantly been in the playoffs. I mean, y'all were in the finals last year. Coming into the league and being a part of such a family of elite players and a franchise that is known for championships and winning, how do you kind of embrace that pressure and that weight um, of coming into that kind of organization and kind of having that on your back, but letting that pressure work to your benefit? I'm just thankful. Um, it's one of those things that they always say there's pressure, but it feels good to be able to say you're on a team that's competitive, that's winning, that's um, coming, going out there and trying to have fun every single night. And it's taught me a lot because um, people say you don't understand how good you have it in this league at times. And when I got drafted to the Celtics, um, like it's not like college where you lose one game and can change the course of a season. So like when we lost, it was a still a frustrating thing. And I can only imagine what it was like to be on a different team where they're losing 60 plus games in a season. So for me, it was always a, a position of thankfulness and a position of just make sure you don't be the one to mess it up. <laughs> so um, with that, throughout this time that I've been with the season, we've been lucky to have some success and we still not accomplish our ultimate goal yet, but um, we've been able to do a lot of great things. And I've had, fortunately had a lot of great people around me. Um, I've had a lot of great veterans that show me along the way, not only through my rookie second and third year, but also I'm hoping to do the same to the young guys that come after me as well. And it's one of those things that you take all this time and you're surrounded by winning, you're surrounded by this culture and you trying your best to add to that and not take away from it. And that's something that I've always continued to try to do. I love that. I love that. Because a lot of people don't, I mean, everybody that's a commentator and a spectator at the end of the day, and at least a lot of them don't realize the, the smallest bit of margin that it takes to get into the NBA on top of staying in the NBA and like staying, having an impact and things like that. So I, I definitely love that's how you did that, that, the gratefulness and just like using that as the foundation to continue building off of as you continue to go on is I, I love that's very important. Now, I know I talked about being with this team and, you know, just the elite level of players that you're around, including yourself and just the organization. And I think last year, somebody I've been following for a long time, who I've loved to see level up, lethal shooter. I saw, I think mm -hmm. sometime last year in May, um, y'all were out there shooting, practicing on the three points, perfecting your three point shot, which has definitely paid off. Because you're locked in. I'm talking about like you're shooting 48%, from, almost 50% from three this year. Just like last week, you went four from six from three uh, in your uh, career scoring high against the Raptors. Like just perfecting the craft that I love. And I mean, can't nobody not respect the perfection and like the dedication to the craft. I would love to know what was it like working with him? And can you kind of speak to that passion? Um for consistent like self-awareness in your game and improvement at the same time. Absolutely. I'll speak to the second point first. Um, in terms of my improvement, it's something that I've been focused on since I was young. I've always been a person that your strengths are your strengths. Some people focus on those, but for me, I've always focused on my weaknesses and the things that I can't do. So my first year, the biggest question mark for me was could I guard perimeter players or could I shoot? And um, I went through a, a little drought in the beginning of the year and the confidence was still there. I kept shooting it, kept shooting it, and finally ended up shooting 40% the rest of the season. Worked with Lethal that summer. 
Um, thankfully, um, I have a good, a good relationship with him. Had one since like we were, since I was probably 14, 15 years old due to my brother. And um, just been fortunate to be able to work with him in the summer, um, be able to keep, he keeps you focused, keeps you quote locked in. Uh, that's the number one thing with him is like, he understood that my shot wasn't more so, he didn't have to change any mechanics. He didn't have to change, it was just more so repetition. And it was more so preparation. So that's something that we were very, very vital and vocal about from the start. And Throughout my entire season, my rookie and second year, I was improving on the defensive end by doing ladder ladder work for my coach B Bailey, and I always give him credit for that. And guarding our quote, what you would consider as walk ons in college, like our managers, our our video coordinator staff, I um was guarding them in one on one situations and closeouts the entire time. So, um, fortunate to have a lot of great people surrounding me to help me improve. But um, in terms of my shooting and the improvement that I've had there, um it's been just about a matter of consistency. Um, lethal has been huge on just continue to tell me, uh, stay mindful, stay focused, stay um, locked in for every single shot and shoot it with confidence and trust yourself because you're a great shooter. And he texts me that every, almost every other game and keeps me, keeps me uh, locked in and, and mindful of that. So I'm um, thankful for him and thankful for just everyone that's been there for me throughout the process to continue to help me improve on the weaknesses that I had. And now, now I can consider strengths. Now it's just a matter of figuring out the, what's the next thing that I need to improve on as well. I love that. I love that. Cause like, I think like you said that, that awareness of understanding your weaknesses and your strengths, but then also, being aware enough to be like, you know, I'm weak in this area. This is where we're going to improve, like limiting those weaknesses. And I think it means a lot to speak to consistency. I think no matter, no matter the craft from on the court to creation, that consistency piece is always key because a lot of people struggle with consistency, like from starting the gym to the new year or whatever goal it is, it's always consistency to kind of like let's things fall off. So I love that you still continue to keep up with that consistency to order perfect, perfect your craft. So I, I love that. Um, Last year, we were down to last year. I know we're way deep into the season now, but last year, finals against the Warriors. It was amazing, hell of a series, just watching it. Um, I know the experience, you know, it's the first time in the finals as well. I know the experience tested you mentally. I'm pretty sure it was super taxing physically as well. I mean, you're going back and forth, one of the best teams in the league, where it's fair to say that game four, I've seen you speak on too, that game four is kind of that that shift um, of, of the series in a way. Um, what would you say is the biggest takeaway that you've taken from that game uh, for yourself and just heading into this season and like how you, as you continue to kind of, I'm, no, you don't watch that. You haven't watched the the, the series at all. I remember saying that in a podcast a couple, about a month or two ago, I remember saying that in a podcast, but how do you kind of like channel the learnings from that into your game today? Um, and just like, what do you take away from that for yourself and for the team? Mental maturity and discipline. Um, those are the two biggest takeaways I had from not only that series, but just in terms of what helps this team moving forward. Um, our biggest uh, challenge will always be how mentally disciplined we are, not only with our, our play, but also how we are with one another. So we want to make sure our energy is infectious. We want to make sure that we continue to make one another better because this team talent wise is probably the most talent, one of the most talented teams in the league. It's yeah. just a matter of us continuing to understand that we have to play the right way consistently, but also we have to understand that teams are going to try and milk up the game, make it physical, try and take us out of our, of who we are. And we can't allow that. That's something that um, as an organization, as a team, we have to be mindful and and detailed and rig and focused on every single night because we get everyone's A game, everyone's best shot. And for us to be able to be able to say that we're quote one of the best teams or the best team, we have to come out and approach that with the right mentality and accept it. Mm, I love that mental maturity, man. Like that is a big piece, a big takeaway for anybody. Like just being able to grow in that spot mentally, which arguably sometimes is the hardest spot to grow in mentally. Like it's a way of thinking. It's a way of not just thinking when you're in the moment, when you're outside of the moment, like constantly training the brain, which is damn near one of the hardest muscles you can really train. So I, I love that you pointed out that that mental maturity is like a big piece. Um, Now I talk about what he does on the court, but he also does a lot. And I mean, a lot of work off, off the court. Um, he has the Grant Williams family family foundation and will be donating 10 K to that foundation. Um, for those who are a little more familiar with the mission, let me uh, fill you in on what they do. The foundation, they're dedicated to identifying and promoting opportunities for the next generation. That's through sports, financial, financial empowerment, mentorship, and the arts. They're really building um, intergenerational wealth, 
which I think is extremely key um, to uh, extremely key foundation to build upon. Um, I would love to know, you know, I know you're you were born in, in Houston, which is like whole close to me because I'm born from, in Texas too. Um, but I know Charlotte means a lot to you. Um, I would love to know what does Charlotte mean to you, and how did your life experiences there motivate you, and kind of always motivate you to always have a bigger impact more than just your career. Something that I grew up with in Charlotte was just a sense of community and family. Um, that's something that was huge instilled upon me growing up, not only through my my parents, but also just in terms of who I was surrounding myself with in, in, in school, as well as through sport. Um, I felt like that they gave Port so much into me. And that's something that I will always want to do the same and pour back into the community that poured into me to be able to be the person that I am today. And Charlotte as a city, like how house developed, how it's continued to improve is continuously growing over the past years. I've seen it grow and improve from when I was young to now, even when I go back now today. And I'm just always mindful of the next hope Grant Williams or even the, the Grant Williams that isn't Grant Williams. It's a whole different field and career. And that's something that we use the foundation for is understanding that not everyone is going to be an NBA player. Not everyone is going to be an NFL star, but there are going to be people that can really impact the community that impacted myself as well. I remember I had a lot of great role models growing up in Brian Field. I had Edward Addy. I had guys that I um, looked to for guidance and counsel and advice. Same with um, when I talked to Keith Cockerell, who uh, works for Bank of America, one of my friend's fathers. Um, those are three people I always looked to that I was like, dang, I want to be as successful as them, if not more, and do what they do for their community. And that's what the foundation is really all about, is making sure that we understand how we can make an impact, not only in the community, even if we don't necessarily make it to the pro professional sports ranks. And the concept of foundation is family. And we, in my family, the biggest roots were in education, were in um, sport, as well as in the arts. And those are the trio that we always lived by. The financial empowerment is the one I'm adding into now, because when you're growing up, you don't really necessarily think about that when you don't have the money to do it. 100%. So like, for me, it's like now it's a matter of that teaching, understanding, okay, this is something that we have to move forward as a community to add into those three principles. Because um through education, we can not only improve our knowledge of ourselves, but also our surroundings and what we can do. Um, mentorship, we have guidance in situations in which maybe others have failed. It can help us either have early success or even move forward to guide us along a, a better path than the one they, they may have taken back in the past, as well as um, in the arts where I wouldn't have the diverse mindset that I have and in, in the ability to communicate and, and converse with different people if it wasn't for me being in musical theater, me being a piano, me being in chorus, me being in a ballet when I was in the seventh grade, like doing things that just aren't necessarily traditional. And I always look to those um, true core principles to to what we move forward in the community and how we can really make improve those around us. Man, that's so inspiring, man. Like just the impact, like to just think of, everything outside of yourself. I, I think I was, uh, did a last episode we had a blast on the show. And I remember mentioning a quote where he was basically saying, you judge success off of as many people that you bring with you. Like, you know, success is judged not by what you do, but by the people that you bring up and lift up. And that everything that you just spoke to is like the epitome of what that means. And just making sure that no matter if they want to go to the NBA or not, like that they're still have the same resources, the same motivation, the same tools, education to be successful in their own land. That's extremely important. So I I, I love and very much appreciate what y'all do in the team and everything. So that's that's amazing. And I would love to add on to that because I know we're a few days for Black History Month. I think we're maybe like six or seven days. The days start to blur after a while, but I know I'm around that same yeah, time. Around there. Um, sometimes I think people don't understand, as I mentioned earlier, how hard it is to make it to the league, harder to stay, on, to stay in the league. On top of that, NBA VP, NBA, MB, NB, PA, VP. I, I be messing up all these letters, man. Don't get it started. Letter. <laughs> and on top of that, though, imagine the foundation of virtual mentoring in Boston amongst amongst other endeavors. Like, what I would love to know, because you just told me kind of what inspired you and how uh, Charlotte helped kind of build you with family and the bases and the foundations. I would love to know that when it comes to Black history, what are some moments, whether it be civil rights leaders or just moments in general that kind of stuck with you and that kind of helped put that battery in your back to continue pushing on the mission that you do um, and impacting the community as a whole as you continue to do today? 
The civil rights movement as a whole was very impactful for me, um, just in terms of the community I grew up in. I grew up in West Charlotte Bay's Four Road um, area, and my mom was one of the uh, part of the mom and, the, and, the, and the, the people that I grew up in church were part of, part of the first that were integrated in the public school system. So just hearing about Miss Counts and hearing the stories from them about what it was like when they were growing up versus now is always something that I always look back to and always try. And, that's why I always say inclusion is always the number one thing, because when everyone feels equal and empowered, that is when we have the most success. But when someone feels superior to another, that is when you start seeing issues, not only within the community, but also within one's self-belief. Mm -hmm. And I've always been very, very vocal on the civil rights movement in general because my grandfather uh, was a big Bill Russell fan. And he was a big um, fan of just not only people that used their voice and power, but also uh, were willing to risk their whole entire career platform to make sure everyone around them had success better. And that's something that I always told myself that I would be willing to do as well is that if there's times where I might not be able to do what I do now, I might not be a basketball player the rest of my life, but there is an impact that I can be made in the time that I am a basketball player and the time that I'm after to be able to not only help the community that I was in, but also help the communities that are surrounding and, and, and growing to the point where I want to not only just do it in North Carolina, but nationally and internationally after going to Africa this past year, just being able to make an impact uh, and not only just in the community that I'm in, but also in the world itself. Mm, I love that. I love that. And I, and I had to ask that question, not because, you know, Black History Month is coming up. I think too, growing up, there's still, till this day, there's things that we don't even, like, we didn't even know were a part of Black history or like, even as of recent Black history or just things that we just, there's so many things that our people have done and our people have went through that we don't even know that we find out more and more every year. And I, I had to ask that because I know that there's things that I've learned. Like when I learned Fred Hampton's story, like that has yes. stood me since I first watched it. I can't, like, I always think about that. So there's just, sometimes there's things that we learn during those moments. They stick with us forever. They just like to continue to like grow that seed for us to like continue to have that battery in our back. So I, I love, I love that. And I love this, the, um, the piece of speaking to people who went through it. I think a lot of the times we don't, sometimes people don't appreciate our elders and the people who have been through way more than, than we had beforehand and kind of put into perspective how we, good we really have it at times and the stories that they have available and the knowledge. So I think that is just, I love to hear that those stories, those moments, that experience continues to tap in and like lives through you now. So I, I love that. Um, I'm talking about history, but you also have made history yourself. You know what I'm saying? You're the youngest person to be VP of the MBPA. Um, take me through like the mindset of just being a part of that organization or being part of the, um, the group. And what is your mission as VP? Because I don't think a lot of people um, understand, you know, like what it means to do that. And I would love to just highlight that huge, a uh, piece of your career and accomplishment within itself. Absolutely. So the biggest focus for me is just making sure that players are protected um, for not only the, the years prior, but also for years to come and even the years that we're living in now. Um, we're trying to put the best basketball product on the floor night in and night out, but we also have to make sure that our players are mindful of who they are and what they can be, both as businessmen, both as fathers, both as uh, teammates, both as um, what, whatever they are trying to accomplish in life, giving them the tools and the power to be able to do that and empowering them to make an impact wherever they see fit in ways of not only just with their foundations in the community or even just being able to say, hey, are you okay? Like that's another thing that as in this role, it's something that I've been very, very big on because people don't understand the life that we live uh, most times. It's hard to look outside looking in. Everything was great. You make millions of dollars. You do this, that, or whatever. You get to travel. But at the end of the day, people really go through things that just even the average person goes through every single day. Same as divorce, same as losing a loved one, and even just lack of uh, confidence in the work that you're doing or lack of love for the job that you have. Like there's that all floats and being able to be there for for players in this situation is something I've been very, very big on. And I've always been big on giving back. And my position in the role that I have with the VP, uh, being VP of MBPA allows me to do that both inside the, the NBA world, being able to give back to players and making sure that we're well protected for not only for intergenerational wealth, but also for intergenerational knowledge. That's another thing. Um, but also being able to have a voice in the conversation because sometimes 
uh, especially a guy in my position, I'm not necessarily the superstar player. I'm not a guy that, um, you know, ends up being the number one option on any team and wins the championship. Like I'm the guy that's like giving, had to work to like hard nose, get there and still fighting to stay here. And giving that perspective to the guys that may necessarily not have had that um, has been huge for me as well. So being able to fight for those who necessarily are rookies or on the minimum deals or mid, mid or mid level deals and stuff like that, that aren't necessarily the, the 35, 38 million, $40 million guys. That's something I've always had perspective as well. Mm. I love that's a lot for me to think about too. Cause I, I, me as a fan, I think sometimes I, I never realized that those resources that need to and are available for the players for those things. Like you said, they're, they're humans at the end of the day too. And you think of mental health and you think of just like them going through the things that we also go through and just the, the, the struggles of being a player and, and having that, like people think, Oh, they're rich. Like th- what problem do they have? But like also with a lot of money comes a lot of problems, like no pun intended though. Like there is a lot of issues and things that come around. So it's, Nice to see that that there is that organization that is standing for them, caring about them, and to see that you're a part of that and knowing that you have such a big heart when it comes to doing things just bigger than yourself. That's that's super amazing. And I, I de- that's definitely a motivator, a motivator for me personally. So I, I appreciate that. Much appreciate um, bro. Now, one thing I talked about, you know, how I, I really respect that and appreciate it. But one thing I think I admire about you the most, and the more that I've come to learn from you, is that similar to me, you've always let your passions and your interests have life in a way that brings you joy which i think is extremely pivotal extremely key i mean your mom's nasa background inspires you to love engineering and and, and space um being a nationally ranked chess player at an elite level which i don't think a lot of people know about playing 10 musical instruments that i that you mentioned earlier and playing them well all these passions that you love and that are kind of gain your interest and you allow them to live you give them life um I would love to know where does that kind of happiness with exploration come from in your life? And as an adult, how do you continue to keep, kind of keep that same characteristic alive today, being that you have such other things to do in your career and just more things that are, you know, like priority, I guess you can say, how do you continue to keep that alive? I've always been big on living to learn. That's kind of how I approach my life. It's how I live my life. It's the slogan to live life by because people always say there's something new you can learn every single day. There's so much culturally, there's so much spiritually, there's so much educationally that we can always learn in many different fields. And I've been huge on just listening and I both know when to listen, but also when to contribute. And that's something that I had to grow with through time. You know, you go through the wavering waves of confidence where it's like, you don't know. Like I've always said, I'd rather ask and know and learn than not ask and be in the dark. Mm. And that's something that I've always been vocal about is like, yeah, you may not necessarily seem like you're the smartest in the room then, but you, by you asking that question, it gives empowerment to those who don't feel like they can ask the same question. And I've been big on like, not only just myself, in terms of like how I approach my life, but also encouraging others to do the same because I'm curious. I've always been curious as a kid. I was a curious, you know, asking my mom every question in the book, asking my dad, every my brothers. And at times, you know, they're going to, all right, leave me alone. But at the same time, sure. <laughs> they're like, all right, cool. Let me explain, sit, sit you down, tell you why this is. And I think that level of maturity allowed me to just like continue to do it in my life naturally. And help those around me to do the same because even if th- someone doesn't feel comfortable asking it as a group I may ask it and then they may approach me individually hey thanks for asking that or they may say hey what did you hear and then ask me for like personally and that's something that I've always been saying like just vocal and communication is the number one thing in life and I've learned that it's best to appreciate and learn of other people's cultures and other people's interests and habits than to judge or or downplay someone else because like I said, every just how how society treats um, not only athletes but entertainers stuff like that versus the actual working class and understanding that hey, I don't know how to um, form something in 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 metal or form a sword. Like who does who's to say that's not just as important as what I'm doing today? You know, just not as enter- just as entertaining. You know, everyone's craft and career somewhat like you have a passion for it. So learning about those passions and listening and understanding those passions has always been something that I try to do. And I'm thankful for because it allows me to have a certain perspective and understanding in life and saying that um, everyone has value and everyone's important. I, I gotta let that breathe a little bit. That's, a, that's really a word right there. Like I think even just those three words, living to learn, like that is huge. I, I think I was 
talking to my wife last night about like purpose and how do you know, you know, what you're meant to do, or what you want to do. And just about how important it is that you just do those things that make you happy. And that those things that you enjoy or like want to learn about will take, like, will kind of show you, you know, where you, where you belong and where your heart really is or what you really want to do. And I think that that living to learn piece is something I'm probably going to be keeping in my head for a long time. Cause I mean, we do make mistakes. We do ask a lot of questions. I was the same kid who was asking too much questions when I was growing up and stuff too, got in trouble for sometimes that I shouldn't have, but I asked a lot of questions, but it is such an important piece to like want to learn that knowledge and want to, to grow and just explore those like passions and stuff. So I think the living to learn pieces, that's a word for me for sure. I'm going to keep that in my pocket. Um, <laughs> One more thing. I know I said, I know you're super busy um, and, you know, I admit we're in the middle of the season. All Star Weekend's around the corner. But I want to ask you one more question before we wrap things up. I want to make sure I respect your time. Now, I mentioned Black History Month earlier and it's full of significant heroes. But, you know, those heroes don't wear capes respectfully. And I would love to know, you know, sometimes you you channel your inner dark night Batman. And I respect it and I love it. It's brought up some of the funniest moments to me in general. But I would love to know, have your teammates begun to refer to you as Batman finally in a bit, like a bit more this season? And aside from that, honestly, what traits do you see in yourself of that character on and off the court? Because I love it's like a childhood thing because childhood, like those kind of things seem funny, but they really matter to like the younger inner kid in us that like allows our adults to still live. So I would love to just kind of know those things. Yeah, so um, the first question, uh, yes, a little bit. A couple of teammates, <laughs> more so like JT and JB would never like could do that. But like Smart, Al, like Sam, a lot of guys tease me and jokes and about it. And it's like, oh, Batman showed up tonight for once. And it's like, <laughs> or like Save God, but like they make jokes like that, which is dope and cool to have. And then in terms of comparison, I've always been huge on like Bruce Wayne's traits of like, just like knowledge and learning. He's willing to learn in every scenario and wants to know every, every single detail. And then um, the way he's his philanthropic ways and being able to like give back, but also understanding and being mindful of, of the surroundings that are, he understands who he is and understands that, yeah, I'm not, I'm not Superman. I'm not like this guy, but guess what? I can find ways to like, now it's like a cool, like you thought you had a chance against me. No, I I have this chance because I have this up my sleeve. He always has a cer- certain plan. And for me, I always like saying like planning and understanding not only who you are, but also your surroundings can help you impact many different people in many different ways. And it helps you put people in position to have success. And I love that about Bruce Wayne and his intelligence and his ability to not only construct and instruct. I love that, man. I love that, bro. That's super fun. And one day, Jason, they don't, they don't come around and start calling. They don't put the merch. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> For sure, man. Well, look, I'm going to respect the time. I know you're busy. Like I said earlier, I'm going to let you go. I really appreciate you joining the show, man. Definitely keeping my eyes on you this season and looking forward to you just continuing to go far, man. I, I know it's going to be a great season. I've been watching the interviews, seeing how you're speaking about the, the team and their mindset as they go into this year. And I just, I just, I can feel it. It's something special. I, definitely something special. So I'm definitely rooting for me on my end. And you know, I got my two coworkers who bleed green, who are definitely rooting for you too. Um, but yes, again, thank you for joining today. Appreciate y'all. Another episode of Community Voices, and we will see y'all next time. Take care. Peace.